Welcome back, guys. Um, I just woke up. Don't mind my voice. It probably sounds pretty manly. I don't know. But look at this set of nails. I did that. <laughs> uh, I freestyled this set, and there might be something like it out there, but my inspiration for this set was... Um, I watch a lot of Russian nail techs, and they do beautiful short nails. And the way they do them is mesmerizing. So, I saw a picture on Instagram of um, a natural nail length uh, and with gel polish design. And... It kind of, it kind of had like an off-white nail with like purple streaked through it. And I thought in my head, like, wow, you know, it kind of looks like um, a geode nail, but it didn't have any dimension. And then I thought, oh man, I could do something like that but on long nails and I can do it in acrylic and add dimension. So that's what I did. And that's where I got the inspiration from. Even though if you was to look at both the pictures, they definitely are nothing alike. Uh, you'd, you'd look at the one picture and say, how did you get inspiration? for this set from that. <laughs> so, oh, sh yeah, I about dropped my laptop. I left the prep of my practice hand in because I wanted to show you guys how I use it now. Now that I've gotten comfortable with Alice and I'm not scared of ruining her, I, uh, I leave the tips in. I've glued those tips in a while back and I don't take them out. I put a thin layer of builder gel over and every time I take <clears throat> every time I take a set of nails off, I just file back down to the clear builder gel and start over. Now, if her cuticle areas get a little rough or anything else, if it's not bad, I leave it. And before I take the pictures, <clears throat> I just put cuticle oil around it. And where it's jagged, it kind of gets a little bit white looking. The cuticle oil causes it to not be white. And then you can't see it in the pictures. So it doesn't matter. So if you have a um, practice hand and you want to take pictures, make sure that you put cuticle oil around the cuticles and it will kind of hide some of the blemishes. And then if it's a piece that ends up kind of ripping or hanging off, I take my cuticle, my Russian cuticle scissors, and these things are super sharp and I just kind of trim it off and it shows fresh skin colored silicone once you kind of nip it off and you can't tell that there was ever a little jagged piece there to begin with and if you know where i got this hand from <clears throat> i'm sorry i'm really sorry that i keep doing that because i you know just woke up <laughs> uh so i i got this hand from amazon it's the know you brand and i got it for 63 dollars or 69 i'm not sure but this hand is really similar to the red iguana hand and the differences are you know the red iguana hand is a little bit more firm and then the well at the cuticle is super super 
uh, short on this hand. So 10 millimeters is how far up you can push your tip into the cuticle on these hands. On the red iguana hands, they give you 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters is a lot better because the silicone has more area to grip the tip and the tip doesn't move so much. On these hands, only having 10 millimeters of space to push the tip up into, it, it does not grip the tip very well. And yeah, <laughs> me and my friend were laughing this morning <laughs> about me talking about gripping the tip. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, YouTube. <laughs> My friend says, do they know that's not what you sound like? <laughs> Going back into my old videos or just like my video from yesterday or the last video that I uploaded, you know, for some reason, as soon as I would press the record button, I'd go, hey, guys. <laughs> I can't stop it from happening. And she's like, do they know that is not what you sound like? And I was like, probably not, but I can't stop it from happening. You know, it's taken a lot to get comfortable with YouTube. And it's just, especially when you have to sit there and talk, you're just a little uncomfortable. So yeah, but, um, so I talked about the, <clears throat> I talked about the nail well, and I talked about, oh, these hands are super bouncy. They do not have any resistance to them. So when I wasn't gluing the tip in and it was being held on by a prayer up in that cuticle area, um, not only was it popped up a little bit from the nail bed because it just wouldn't hold on to it very well, but also when I went to apply the acrylic, it would, the finger itself would just bounce every time I went to pat so I would have to hold it in so many weird positions my index finger would have to be on top of the finger above the cuticle where it's being held underneath where the tip is being held under the skin I would have to kind of hold that down and then I would have to put my thumb under the finger on where the fingerprint would be on that hand just so the finger wouldn't bounce down every time I went to pat it. Okay, I've talked too much. We gotta get to this design because this is such a beautiful design. This is a me style. As much as I love my butterfly freestyle, this style here is something that I would definitely wear. I love abstract designs and just dimensional nail art and encapsulated glitter that <clears throat> you kind of make look like something else so yeah this is definitely something that i would rock and also definitely don't forget that i have a giveaway going on on the last video i did the butterfly video so you need to go back and also i pinned at the top in the comments that you don't just have to have ig if you don't have ig you can leave your email so go back and enter for that dip kit giveaway. I swear I'm going to get to this design eventually. <laughs> Let's uh, pay respects to Model 1's white. That's what this is. This is Model 1's white. I bought a bunch of their acrylics and so far I'm really loving them. This white was super creamy and super easy to work with. And then I used Enel Couture's Wonder Woman Purple and then just some raw glitters that I have. And of course, if you ever want to ask me about what I'm using, you can always ask in the comments. Um, I post a lot of videos every week and I use a lot of different things and to post down in the comments or in the in the description box all the stuff i use every time is just crazy it takes so much time to get that done i'd probably never get a video uploaded if i did it every time um but okay so what i do is i take a super wet super small bead of white acrylic and i kind of float it like builder gel 
down the nail where I want it to be. And you will see how how I just kind of, I don't have to pat it or anything else. I'm using small beads and this white is super pigmented. So you don't have to use a lot of it at all. And it makes a big difference. If, if you haven't worked with white yet and, or you have gotten a crappy white that's almost sheer, then you wouldn't be able to work with it like this. But this white is so pigmented and creamy that it takes such a small amount to get full coverage. And you can almost use it like, um, like builder gel or <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. I will explain it a little bit better. Um, see where I'm just kind of dragging it into the areas that I want and then using the tip of my brush to kind of float it. And here I'm using even smaller beads and just because I'm at the tip, I'm running out of room. I can't really use too big of a bead. So then I go in with my Wonder Woman purple, a very tiny bead of that super wet and kind of float that into the area that I need it. And I put my raw glitter in that while it's still wet. And this design is super, super thin still. So when I go to encapsulate and file, I'm not going to even come close to worrying about filing into this design. This white was amazing. I, I can't even tell you how easy it was to work with. If you ever use this white, you do not have to worry about picking up a big bead to get all the way down to the tip of the nail. As long as you pick up a medium wet bead, you're going to be able to just float it from the cuticle area to the tip super simply. And then I go in. <clears throat> So around the purple and the glitter, <clears throat> the little uh, little patches that I put in the white, I go around those edges with a very, very tiny, tiny wet bead of the purple and kind of just feather and pat it until I get it to look like it's, um, I'm trying to look like, I'm trying to get it to look like there is <laughs> there is a uh, crater kind of there. So I need that shadowed effect so it looks like you're looking down into the crater. And then here is my marble. Look at how good I did. Look at this. Like I seriously did so good with this marble. And then I'm using two super wet beads. I'm using a medium sized bead of purple and then just the smallest, tiniest dot of white because white will overpower your marble really quick. You cannot use the same size bead of white as you do your color. It, it will overpower it way too fast. And then, you know, just a bippity boppity boop. And just a swish of the magic wand and there's the marble. And while it's still wet, I am putting the glitter in where the purple is. I'm not covering the white with the glitter. So just so you know, if you do this design, don't cover, <clears throat> don't cover the white with the glitter. I want the white to show in its natural state, not not being covered by the glitter. I only wanted the purple to be covered by the glitter. So, and it makes a big difference. If you cover the whole nail with glitter, it's not gonna look the same at all. It will make a drastic difference. And then, um, yeah, I also, I, uh, I saved a clip of where I live in the end of the video just as a little treat for you guys to see because I live in Ohio and we actually have a lot of snow here right now. So I was driving to get my babysitter um, for, you know, my work week. I have 
my babysitter come and stay at my house and uh I go pick her up and on the way to go get her there was so much like beautiful scenery I was driving and there's just ice and snow covering the trees and the snow on the ground was still pure white it had just snowed the night before so it wasn't brown and gross like so pretty so just you know at the end of the video don't click off and then you can get to see how beautiful it looks where I'm at right now and this nail here I wanted each nail to be totally different <laughs> it sounds so stupid when you say like oh I'm planning it to be random yeah I'm planning this to be random <laughs> I don't want any of the nails to look alike at all so you know the first two are with small crevices or um, cracks in the white to where you're seeing down into the purple or the inside I want that purple to look like you're looking down into the inside of a white rock or something like it's cracked open that's what the first two nails are looking like like there's just cracks in them the marble nail is just would be the whole crack you know you're not seeing any of the outside that would be what the whole inside of a geode or um, a rock would be and then this nail here is going to be looking like you know uh you're looking straight down into one of the cracks so you're seeing the white all around it and then the the crack or fissure or i don't even know what you would call the inside of a geode honestly but that's what you would be looking at it's just one straight big crack and yeah so I just floated the white all around the nail and I uh, just kind of worked slow and you know I'm used to taking four to six hours doing so much nail art because I always get myself wrapped up in nail art and I was so surprised because I didn't do mass amounts of hand-drawn nail art I didn't do any actually and you know each of these nails had the same colors getting used and stuff like that I finished this hand in like an hour I think it was yeah something like that like application uh, filing and top coat and it was an hour so and let me say something because I'm really getting annoyed with my savvy land clear curly I went to encapsulate these nails and I thought I would give it a chance again well when I did the black and silver set and here I'm going around and making sure that I'm giving it that shadowed effect so that it looks like you're looking down into you know the the rock itself but so I did the black and silver watch me work and I encapsulated with my silver or <laughs> with my clear savvy land acrylic and it looked like stuff was floating you know there was still bubbles there was it was foggy the black that I had done didn't look so dark black anymore and I'm like what the hell so maybe I made a mistake when I did the black history month set I was not taking a chance on using the the savvy land and when i did the butterfly set i don't think i used the savvy land but this set i figured let me try it let me give it another chance it came out so foggy and i wanted these nails to be matte so if you don't know then it wouldn't it wouldn't be a big deal but i know that i you know I wanted them to be matte but I didn't want them to be foggy and the bubbles the bubbles are frustrating because it's so hard to get the bubbles out and you see you know I I use clean monomer 
I used a clean paper towel. There's no glitter on that paper towel anymore. You know, I did have mass amounts of glitter under that hand from where I was placing glitter and dropping it. This is a clean paper towel. I cleaned my brush. I'm using clean monomer. I'm picking up wet beads. I'm draining out the back on the paper towel. And yet I'm still running into bubbles and fogginess. <clears throat> so I don't know. Maybe it's me, but I don't have those problems with Mia Secrets clear or, you know, Couture's crystal clear. I don't have those issues with those. Just saying. So I think I'm just going to keep this clear for building um, nails with if I'm going to do gel polish overlay. And that's it because I just can't trust it at this point to encapsulate nail designs and let them stay true to what they look like underneath because you really can barely see through what's going on. Uh, yeah, it's frustrating. You, you do so much work and you put in so much time into a design just to let the very last step destroy it for you. So I'm kind of really frustrated with Savvy Land right now. Right now, <clears throat> my voice is cracking out so bad. I need to keep taking drinks of coffee, 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 coffee. <laughs> and I did so good at keeping the shape to these nails. So when I pick up a clear bead of acrylic, and I know that this is not a good um, example, but I don't have the clarity issues with other acrylics so i am going to tell you my um oh there's my head it popped in hey head <laughs> uh so i pick up the bead i put my brush into my dapping dish and i smash it into the bottom of the dish getting all the air bubbles out of my brush every time and then I bring my brush up to the side of my dappin dish and I'm pressing pretty hard. I mean, I I kind of wipe out my brush uh, halfway down the bristles. So the length of my bristles when I'm wiping on the side of the dappin dish, I wipe halfway down and that leaves me quite a bit of monomer in my brush right at the end where I need it to be. I put my brush, the side that I didn't wipe on the dappin dish, the side that would be holding most of the monomer, I use that side that didn't touch anything to pick up the bead. I put that side into the powder and I bounce three times. After the third bounce, I pick the brush up with the bead faced upward and put my brush, the back of my brush down on my paper towel with the bead facing upward and I watch my bristles get matte. So at that point, my bristles were shiny with monomer in them. And when I put it down on the paper towel, I can watch my bristles go matte because the paper towel draws out all the liquid and they're not shiny no more, pretty much. So once my bristles go matte, I pick it up and I place it onto the nail. And when I do clear acrylic, I pat a lot because I hate bubbles. That is the bane of a nail tech's existence if you are a nail tech that loves doing designs and you want to encapsulate them. Oh, with glitter, I go over glitter with a really, really super wet, bead very gently so that it holds the glitter down for when I do go to encapsulate I don't have any glitter falling off or floating up into my bead that I'm encapsulating with. I don't want stray glitters just coming up and floating random in my clear acrylic. It makes it look crazy so that's why I always go over uh, glitter with a super small or super wet, super small bead, kind of like fingernail polish, like a layer of that. I go over it with that just to hold it down and then I go to encapsulate. 
But yeah, when I encapsulate with clear acrylic, I pat for as long as I can just to make sure that, you know, I'm keeping the shape and I don't, I don't really stop patting until I know that it's not really moving too much. If it's not moving anymore, then I will go to pick up another bead. But I always make sure that I pat a lot so that I'm getting out whatever bubbles there might possibly be, which in this set is a lot. Um, it's just frustrating to look at. I know you guys can't see it, but I can, uh, or I could while I was doing the set. Oh my God, can you guys hear my daughter? She's literally just out there yelling. She's a two-year-old little attitude. <laughs> So to my application, and here I will go over the glitter with a tiny super wet bead. So again, it holds it down and I don't have to worry about glitter floating up into my encapsulation. I, um, I, well, that one, damn it. Okay. I do the bottom half of the nail first though. And usually I will just set the bead down and then drag it to the end of the nail. And I get that part done first, the bottom half of the nail. And then when I go in with my cuticle bead, I will do my usual. See where I'm tucking? I tuck the sides first so that I don't have to worry about the acrylic running into the cuticle. So I set my bead down and when I pick my brush up, I tuck. Now I'm going to tuck at the cuticle area, but I always tuck first. I don't care what the bottom of the bead is doing. It could run off the end of the nail for all I care. In order to get my cuticle application really pretty, I always use a wet bead at the cuticle. And when I lift my brush up, as soon as I lift my brush up, I start tucking the acrylic around the cuticle so that it's not running into the skin on the sides. Here I'm cleaning my brush. Oh, we're past this. Okay. We're past it. I'm going to be doing a video on my acrylic application here soon. And I, I like the way I apply my acrylic. So I have filed the nails and in order to uh help with the clarity every time i do encapsulated nail designs and i've encapsulated with a lot of clear i go over my finished filing with um, primer to help fill in the scratches and once i go to top coat it oh those are so pretty man this design this design is so cool. I love this design. This is my favorite, favorite, favorite freestyle design ever. And here I'm going in with Model 1's matte top coat. And um, yeah, it's done. We're done. This is, this is the design. And you can kind of see what it would look like shiny right now. And Shiny is okay, but I'm so sick of shiny nails. I am so sick of shiny nails. I love matte nails. I do. So I try to do an even amount of shiny to matte nails. So, but yeah, what do you guys think about it? Do you guys like this style? Do you guys like these type of designs? Um, I try to I try to do a good amount of different style designs just so I can practice and, ah, so pretty. Ah, I can't wait to be able to wear a set of nails like this. My job, I'm about to quit my job so that I can wear nails like this. Make sure you guys subscribe, okay? And make sure that you go back and you check out the butterfly video for the giveaway. And this is what it looks like outside right now. Do you see all the ice in the trees and the snow and how white it is? 
Oh, it's so pretty. Have a good day, guys. I hope you like the video. I really do. And have a blessed day.